Yo guys, what's going on? Matt here and welcome to the finale. This is the last episode I'm going to be doing for my NHL division previews for the 2015 to 16 season as we are going to be going over the Atlantic division today. So unlike a couple of other divisions like the Central Division and the Metropolitan Division, this division was actually pretty straightforward and easy to predict, at least in my opinion, as either the teams are ready for the playoffs or just maybe need a few years to regroup or are definitely not going to make the playoffs. So without further ado, here are the predictions for the Atlantic Division. All right, so here we go. Starting things off, we have the Boston Bruins. Last year was not a very good year for them as they missed the playoffs for the first time in the last few years. And in the last day of the season, it came down to them, the Penguins, and the Senators. The Senators and the Penguins took the two spots, and the Bruins were knocked out. And they finished in at least a chance to get Connor McDavid. Obviously, that wasn't likely to happen, and it didn't. So they had a decent draft pick, um, and they traded a couple of players away, including Milan Lucic to the LA Kings to get three consecutive draft picks. And honestly, I was kind of questioned by the picks they took. I really thought they would take um, players that were more well-known, like a Kyle Connor or something like that, but uh, they decided to go off the chart for, I guess, yeah, two of the three picks. And um, yeah, they just really wanted to turn it around. They have a new GM now. And after a fifth place finish in the Atlantic Division last year, they have to turn things around. So I said that the MVP for them last year was Tuka Rask. Patrice Bergeron was the top player for them points-wise, but I really think Tuka Rask had to... Uh, Helped this team out a lot, and honestly, I think that without him playing his... I mean, he didn't even have his best season, but he played pretty decently, and if he didn't even play decent, then they would have been in big, big trouble. So, in the offseason, they did do a couple of things. Like I said, they had those three consecutive draft picks. I don't think any of them really are going to be debuting this year. It's going to take a few years for them to come up. Um, but they did sign Matt Bolesky and Matt Irwin. So as a Sharks fan, I can tell you that Matt Irwin has a very, very good shot. It's a laser, and uh, if he gets an option or a, a, an opening in the lanes to get a shot through and he takes it, it's going to be a hard one whether it goes in or not. It's it's going to be on net. So that's what you want if you're the Bruins. And uh, Matt Bilexi comes over. I'm not really the biggest fan of him. Um, a lot of analysts and writers were kind of obsessing over him, like he's the, one of the top free agents because this free agent class this year was, wasn't too great. Um, but I really just don't think he's that much of an impact player. Like I... I really didn't want anybody to pick him up because it would just be kind of a waste of money, I think. I don't know. I feel like the Boston Bruins had an okay offseason. Bolesky and Irwin are de some decent players, but uh, let's be honest. They kind of needed a little bit more, and they traded away Milan Lucic. I really just don't see them going to the playoffs again next year. It was kind of a quick retool for them, I think, but I, I don't know. I feel like right now at this point in time, they're going to be about fifth or sixth in the division, and they aren't going to make the playoffs next season. Moving forward, we have the Buffalo Sabres, and last year was a pretty awful season for them as they finished last place in the division and last place overall in the NHL, but just like the season before where they finished with the worst record, the team, or at least a team ahead of them, decided to go ahead and win the lottery, like the Florida Panthers did getting Aaron Ekblad the season before, they did get Sam Reinhart though, and then this season, the Oilers took the Connor McDavid sweepstakes, so... Buffalo, honestly, if they didn't get Connor McDavid, I knew they wouldn't be too mad, and they didn't. They got Jack Eichel, and trust me, this is a very, very good piece for this team. Connor McDavid is good, but so is Jack Eichel. A lot of people thought maybe he would go back to Boston um, University for his uh, next season, but he decides to go and join the Buffalo Sabres. Like McDavid, he will definitely make the opening night's rosters, and... Um, I really think this team didn't prove. Their MVP last year was nobody, and just like the Oilers, I really don't mean this as a joke, I don't. It's just that no one on this team really played that well last year. There was some development, but really no one came in and surprised. So um, during the couple of the rookie training camps and stuff like that, you saw Jack Eichel shine. You also saw Sam Reinhart, their third overall pick from a while ago. He shined, and they really do have a really good farm system. You saw last year, uh, Gergensons came up and he played very well. They did trade Gregorenko, and Zadorov, their defenseman, to the Colorado Avalanche, but they did get Ryan O'Reilly in return. So not only did they get Jack Eichel from the draft, but they also got Ryan O'Reilly. He's a very good player. He's tough, he scores goals, and that's exactly what they need. And they also got Robin Leonard. So they finally get their, uh, well, at least what they think is their number one goaltender from the Ottawa Senators, because the Senators just had too many goalies uh, that could have been the starting goaltenders for them. And they traded one away, that's Robin Leonard, and um, 
You know what? The Sabres think he's their number one guy. I mean, he is their number one guy, but he, they think that he's a good number one guy that is a good enough goaltender for them. And I don't know if I agree with this. Uh, they kind of give up a lot. They give up their 21st overall pick, I believe. And they did have to give up pretty good amounts. Uh, yeah. So basically, um, I feel like Robin Leonard is a good goaltender. He's their number one, but I don't know if he's a good number one. They feel like they're going to continue and use him, but uh, we'll see. I think they do get better next year, though, with all the development. I don't know if Reinhardt's coming in. I know Jack Eichel's coming in. I expect both of those guys to come in. And now with Ryan O'Reilly, you get some more players around those two. Um, and Robin Lehner, who's a decent goaltender. Uh, he's a good backup goaltender, that's for sure. Has the potential to become a good goaltender. Um, I think that they're going to make a step in the right direction. Obviously, probably not going to make the playoffs. Not looking at that for another few years. But I figured that they would finish a little better than last and finish in 7th place in the Atlantic Division. Next up, we have the Detroit Red Wings. And last year, they did pretty well. They usually do well. They usually make the playoffs. The season before, they didn't do too well. And this season, they come back, make the top three. They finished in third place in the Atlantic Division. So they did well. And the MVP, I said, was Thomas Tatar. And the points leaders were Hendrik Zetterberg and Pavel Datsuk. Tatar was third or fourth, I believe. But um, those guys are getting old. They really are trying to shift over to the younger group of players um, since those players are getting older, they really haven't been the same since the 2008-2009 Stanley Cup Finals against the Penguins when they won in 08. And like I said, they're getting older. They need younger players to come in. They've done a really good job drafting. They have probably one of the best drafting um, teams, the scouts and everybody. They get those good players. They really do. So with Yurko coming up, Tatar as well. He's been playing well now. Uh, he's been playing the last couple of years. Like I said, didn't lead the team in points, but really played well. I think he had 50-plus points last year, and uh, that's what they need. They need him to start playing better and taking up more of a leadership role and more of a scoring role, scoring more points, which he has been doing as he becomes older and more experienced in the league. In the offseason, they did pretty well. Um, first off, Mike Babcock did leave for the Toronto Maple Leafs. People thought maybe he'd go to the Sabres or maybe stay with the Red Wings. He decides to go to the Maple Leafs which is interesting because that's kind of a mess over there. But um, they do get a new coach, and they'll be looking forward to that. They also did sign uh, probably one of the biggest free agents on the market, which was Mike Green. He decides to leave Washington. Definitely an offensive defenseman, and um, that's a pretty good pickup for the Red Wings. They didn't necessarily, like need defensemen like super bad but they you know they could use some help and Mike Green will definitely help that out he'll score some goals for them um, and they also brought in Brad Richards who is kind of a depth guy was more used for uh, or thought to be used for a third liner in um, Chicago when they picked him up but they did use him more on the second line so basically um, Brad Richards is a decent player Mike Green is a really good player that's gonna help them out and I see them returning to the playoffs next year I see them finishing around third place in the division and they should be facing the second place team obviously but yeah I think it's a good year for Detroit even though they have a new coach I still think to get back to the playoffs again shifting it over to the younger group of players as we move forward with Mike Green and Brad Richards it's gonna be a similar year to last where it was pretty successful to make the playoffs and have a chance to compete for the Stanley Cup. Moving on forward, we have the Florida Panthers. Last year was an okay year. They didn't finish with the best record. Uh, they finished better than usual, I guess, since that playoff appearance a couple years ago. And uh, that put them at sixth in the Atlantic. Their MVP, I put, was Jonathan Huberdeau. Um, he led their team in points, and ever since being drafted, he has been, I guess, not dependent on heavily, but uh, has been kind of having, I guess, high expectations to become a better player and somewhat lead this team. And he has done that. He has um, emerged into a pretty good forward. I wouldn't say an elite or anything, but um, definitely for their team, a top forward, and that's exactly what they needed. They had Alexander Barkov. They also had Aaron Ekblad, who also could have possibly been their MVP. He did not play like a rookie at all. He did very well, and honestly... Yeah, he didn't play like a rookie. He had a really a good amount of points for a rookie and a defenseman at that. So he's a really great addition to that team. It's a really good pickup from them um, with the first overall pick in 2014. And honestly, I, I really did like what this Florida, Florida Panthers team did last year. They obviously didn't make the playoffs or anything, but they seemed to be playing pretty um, important games in March. They were definitely not you know tanking or anything, which is good to see if you're a Florida Panther fan. And in the offseason, they went ahead and signed Riley Smith 
they got him from the Bruins as they had to uh, get a couple of contracts out and all that. So Riley Smith comes over. He's a good, young, promising forward that can be added to the group of players like that for the Panthers. And uh, they have a pretty young group there. If they can just get going, maybe they can get back to the playoffs. I don't see them getting back to the playoffs this year like they did a couple of years ago. They're going to have to wait maybe a year or two. But yeah, Riley Smith, I'm not going to obsess over him. He's not this crazy ad or anything, but he's definitely a good ad for them. He was a, a pretty good player in Dallas when he was there, and then he goes over to Boston. I think he was a great player there too. Boston sends him over, and if he can start scoring and putting up some points, he's going to help the Panthers now and also in the future. I have them finishing ahead of the Bruins at fifth in the Atlantic Division, so a bit of an improvement for the Panthers. They're definitely on the upswing of things and trending upwards. And maybe the playoffs are just around the corner, maybe a year or two away. Now we have the Montreal Canadiens, and it was a very good year for them last year as Carey Price just took every single trophy, it seemed like, at the Las Vegas NHL Awards show. But anyways, they finished first in the Atlantic Division. They went ahead and faced their secondary Canadian rivals behind the Toronto Maple Leafs. They faced the Ottawa Senators in the first rounds. It actually turned out to be a pretty good series, but uh, Montreal in the end ended up winning and going on to the second round where they did lose to the Lightning. It looked like it was going to be a blowout. They came back a little bit and they lost in six. So they had a pretty good season last year, like I said. The offense was decent. It got it done when it needed to get it done, but um, really that was the only place of concern really for the Montreal Canadiens. Like I said, MVP, Carey Price, he'd carry their team without him. They wouldn't be that great because they have a pretty good defense and honestly he is a main part of their defense even though he isn't listed as a defender but uh yeah he did very well and if he's healthy next year and plays the whole year like he did last he's gonna be just as effective in the offseason i think their main target was offense and the carolina hurricanes bought out the contract of alexander semin and the canadians went ahead and scooped him up now here is my thing on semin he did Decent um, he, with the Hurricanes. He didn't do that well. I guess that's kind of why they bought out his contract. But the Washington Capitals, when he was with them, he played a little better. So really, you can get two sides of Alexander Semin. You can get the side that doesn't care too much, doesn't show up to practice on time or at all, and doesn't put up many points, which is why the Carolina Hurricanes bought him out. Or you can get the Semin that is putting up some points and can really help your offense out, which is, I'm sure, what the Montreal Canadiens are looking for and, and are hoping for since they signed him. So... He's going to be put into their offense, a top six forward for sure. And Zach Cassian as well from the Vancouver Canucks as they sent over Brandon Prust. But uh, yeah, for them, I, I don't see a step back really. I feel like they're going to be dominant. But I feel like one team is going to finish ahead of them, which is why they I had them pushed back one spot to the second place in the Atlantic Division, which would mean they face the Red Wings in the playoffs. That'll be a good series for sure. An original six series at that. And um, yeah, like I said, I don't expect them to take a step back. I expect them just to be as good. As last year, especially if Semin can produce, that offense will get a little better and Carey Price doesn't have to save all these shots in a 2-1 win or a 1-0 win. So I have them finishing at second. It's going to be another good year in Montreal, another successful year as they will make the playoffs and have a chance to win the Stanley Cup. Next up, we have the Ottawa Senators and the very surprising Ottawa Senators at that. They made the playoffs and what a comeback it was for them in the regular season. Not a lot of people thought they'd make the playoffs at the beginning of the season. And about halfway through the season, that was also true. They didn't think they would make the playoffs. But they came back, an amazing comeback. And they go ahead and make the playoffs, like I said, with the Montreal Canadiens. They played them and they lost in five games. But uh, you know what? For the Ottawa Senators, it was a pretty successful season. They finished fourth in the Atlantic, just ahead of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And uh, I think they're going to finish around the same spot this year, but we'll get to that in a second. MVP was Eric Carlson. He led their team into po in points as a defenseman. And um, he's really grown into a great, great defenseman in this league and for this team. I remember when they drafted him, a lot of fans were like, who is this guy? But uh, now they're definitely not saying that. He's a great, great piece for this team, which is why he is their MVP. Their offseason, though, really didn't bring anything. And this is where I had a lot of concerns because... You know, you get to the playoffs just barely. I mean, I just, yeah, I came down to the last game of the season, I guess. But definitely you thought they, they would add another piece to try to get over that hump. But they seem to be confident in their team to make the playoffs. And I don't know. There's a lot of tough teams in this Eastern Conference. Um, this division, I feel like fourth and fifth place isn't really necessarily going to get you a playoff spot like it might in the Metropolitan Division. Um, they have the Penguins and the Capitals. I chose those two teams as the wildcard teams, and it doesn't matter. They have 
six or five really good teams in the Metropolitan Division that can make the playoffs which mean three in the top three and two for the wild card. And this this division is going to have to compete with that. You have your top three, and then you have the uh, next two that could try to get it, which would be the Senators and the Panthers, or maybe even the Bruins in this division. But um, I feel like the Penguins and the Capitals would beat these guys out. So with that offseason, when they didn't do anything, this may be, if, you know, may be the reason why they don't make the playoffs next season, which is why I don't have them making the playoffs. I definitely have them as a bubble team, but I feel like the competition has gotten better and they necessarily didn't get too much better. Not that they were bad or anything, but uh, I feel like they were good last year, and they're gonna be about the same this year, finishing in around the same spots, but with Pittsburgh in the Metropolitan and also Washington in the Metropolitan, it's gonna be hard for the Ottawa Senators to get a wild card spot since they're out of the top three, which is why I think they will not make the playoffs this season. Hopefully they're a bubble team if you were a Senators fan, because maybe they can get to the playoffs, but it's gonna be tough, and for me, I don't think they're gonna make the playoffs. And now we move on to the second place team in the entire league, the runner-up to the Chicago Blackhawks in the Stanley Cup Final, the Tampa Bay Lightning. And these guys, I wouldn't say were surprising because they have a pretty good team in my playoff predictions. I had them going to the finals and losing, and that's exactly what they did. And they did pretty well last year. They didn't finish first. That was the Canadians, but um, they did finish second. And I feel like they had a very good team. They deserved to finish there. They faced off against the Red Wings in round one. They beat them against the Canadians in round two, had a 3-0 series lead, then lost the next two, had a little bit of a scare there, but then won it in six. Then they went on in round three, and they went ahead and beat the Rangers in seven, and then lost to the Blackhawks in the Stanley Cup Finals. So overall, honestly, if you're the Tampa Bay Lightning, you shouldn't be too mad at all, because you look at the Stanley Cup champions, the Blackhawks, they had to lose a bunch of players due to the cap amounts that they were over. The Lightning didn't have to do really anything. They kept pretty much their whole team, and uh, that's really going to help them. And I think that they could win the Stanley Cup next year. I think that they are in the prime of their team career, or whatever you want to call it, um, since they won the Cup in 03. So really, I feel like the Tampa Bay Lightning are going to be contenders for sure in the East. Their MVP last year was Tyler Johnson. The only reason I didn't put Steven Stamkos is because Tyler Johnson was second in points behind Stamkos, but in playoffs, he was like first in points, and he did amazing. Stamkos did decent in the playoffs, hit some goals, but Tyler Johnson just went crazy in the playoffs, which is why I had the MVP go to him. It could have easily went to Stamkos. It could have went to a couple other players too, as they had the triplets line, and um, honestly, last season was as good of a success of a season that you could have without winning the cup for the Lightning. In the offseason, they didn't do too much. They did go ahead and sign Eric Condra from the Senators just for some depth. Um, but honestly, like I don't think they needed to do too much because they have a very good team. Some teams need to do a little bit more because they just barely got into the playoffs. But for them, they are a good team and they don't need to do much. Kind of like the Hawks these past couple of years. So they do get Condra for some depth. I had them finishing first in the Atlantic Division above the Red Wings and Canadians. And honestly, I think that they have a very good chance of finishing in the first place. They just have a really good offense if that triplets line can connect like they did last year, which there's a good chance of that happening. And Stamkos there and Bishop Annette. And hey, even if he gets hurt, you can put in Vasilevsky. And uh, you got a really good team. You got Victor Hedman on defense. You can name all kinds of players on this team. Steve Eisenman has done a very good job drafting as you got Kucherov, you got a bunch of people coming in. They can become a very, very big force to reckon with in the East, in the entire NHL. They are probably one of my biggest picks to win the Stanley Cup next year. As we go from the second place team in the NHL, we go to one of the worst and most disastrous teams in the NHL, the Toronto Maple Leafs. And we talked in the Metropolitan Division about the Columbus Blue Jackets and they had a very bad season, pretty much, like I said, the worst season you could ever think of, they had it, but that was just because of injury. They still have a very good team. The Leafs basically had that season, plus worse, plus they didn't even have that many good players. So really, it wasn't a fluke that they had this bad season. It was really meant to be. This whole organization is a mess. It really is. A lot of people will agree. They finished seventh in the Atlantic last year as they were just behind the struggling Buffalo Sabres. They don't win the Connor McDavid sweepstakes, and they go ahead and select Mitch Marner in the draft. It's a smaller forward, but he's going to help. MVP was Phil Kessel. Obviously, he's not here anymore. Um, I was thinking about putting nobody for their team. Again, not really as a joke, but just because there really wasn't too many players that did well. But really, Kessel did do well, and he really doesn't get a credit for a lot of stuff that uh, he does with this team, which is why I think they had to do what they had to do. 
I really think this is the best decision they had to make, not because Kessel is bad and he caused all this trouble, but just a lot of people weren't happy with him at all, and um, I think it's just the best for this organization to let him go. They got a first-round draft pick and a couple of prospects from the Penguins, as Phil Kessel will go on, and he will play with Malkin and Crosby, so I would expect big numbers from Phil Kessel next year. Doesn't necessarily mean that the Leafs will regret this. I think they could possibly if the prospects don't turn out to be great. But uh, yeah, they get Mitch Marner in the offseason. They also get Nick Spalling. This team, though, even though they got the head new head coach, Mike Babcock, from the Leafs, they still don't have two. I guess they have a little bit of direction now that they have Babcock, but they're just starting at the rock bottom. They have nothing. You look at the Sabres. You look at even the Carolina Hurricanes with some defense prospects. You look at the Coyotes with some offense prospects. Those guys are at the bottom, but they re they've been rebuilding, and um, they have some direction. The Leafs have that direction, but they just don't have the farm system, and... They are really starting the full-on rebuild phase, not just a little retool like they did a little bit. They are starting from the rock bottom, a full rebuild like those teams like the Sabres and Coyotes have been doing now for quite a while. And they put Mitch Marner, a little bit of a smaller forward like Nylander or Nylander, and um, he goes into their farm system. But uh, really for the Maple Leafs, they are quite a while away from the playoffs or even talking about it as they did not do well last year. I have them finishing in the last spot in the Atlantic Division, eighth place, and I have them actually pretty low and they are gonna have a very good chance of getting Austin Matthews in that first overall pick next year at the draft all right guys so that is it the previews are over and now we wait for the NHL season this was really fun I really enjoyed doing this I like the format I did it with this year just the divisions and the way I did the whole MVP and outlook and last year's thing and offseason and all that stuff I really enjoyed it again if you guys have any questions comments or concerns maybe about your team Put them in the comment section below if they are not hateful or uh, make us make sense, I guess. Then I definitely will reply. Um, but again, these are my opinions, not yours. So don't get mad. Just uh, let me know what you think. I've had some people comment on the previous video and the Pacific Division and Central Division and all that. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully, um, most of my predictions are right. We will see at the end of the season. And good luck to all your teams. If your team is bad, not looking good, maybe they'll upset a lot of people and make the playoffs. And if your team's good, hopefully they won't screw it all up and hopefully they'll make the playoffs. Good luck to all you guys. And here is to the 2015 to 2016 NHL season. Peace.